But yeah, it's fucking awesome. <laughs> Illuminati! Thanks to the alleged storytelling abilities of Dan Brown. <laughs> No, I mean, whatever you think of Dan Brown, he doesn't have alleged storytelling abilities. He has storytelling abilities. Isn't he like one of the best-selling authors ever? He wrote that uh, Da Vinci Codex. Uh, Codex? Da Vinci Code? Da Vinci Code. <laughs> and that other one, Digital Fortress, which was quite bad. I enjoyed the Da Vinci Code. Like, it was good. It's a fun book. Dan Brown could tell a good story. If you don't let me suck your d I'm gonna kill myself. Take your pants off right now. He not only provided the world with a mediocre book, Angels and Demons, but also the resulted terrible movie. Thanks to this, almost everybody has some idea what the Illuminati is. That the Illuminati exists or existed in some form or another over the years seems to be beyond debate. However, whether or not they are actually a top secret organization that controls the world as portrayed in fiction is another matter entirely. Okay. I mean, yeah, I think the Illuminati... By the way, Dave wrote this. I'm just reading it. Uh, I think the Illuminati is definitely a thing. I don't think it's like some secret cabal that runs the world and meets up in Davos and all that that people go on about. I, I, I just don't think there's people that competent. As an adult, I'm always genuinely surprised by how incompetent people are. Like, you know, because people are not orders of magnitude smarter than me. And if they are, they're not politicians. And so it's like, really? You guys are running the world and you're maybe only like a bit smarter than me? Like, and even if you're a lot smarter than me, it's not like we're operating on different planes. It's like, it, it's quite concerning to be honest because like, I would not do a good job. I don't know. <laughs> It's just like everyone's incompetent. How does this whole world work? A quick look through Reddit will find you groups of people who firmly believe that the Illuminati are behind everything, from choosing who is the next president to unleashing world-altering pandemics upon the human race. It's not, it's not true, it's bullshit. It's a conspiracy. According to those same Reddit groups, I mean, look, it's a Reddit group. <laughs> it'd be like, according to the peer-reviewed journal Science, it'd be like, oh, well, well, I can pay attention to this, but it's a Reddit group. The only thing worse is like a Facebook group filled with Karens. I like Reddit. I have a subreddit, r slash Simon Whistler. Is that how you say subreddits? It's reddit.com slash r slash Simon Whistler. It's a bit of a mouthful and it's as simple as you can make it. Why do you have to have that slash r slash Reddit? Why not just have reddit.com slash thing? Easy, right? According to these same Reddit groups, and unfortunately my brother, oh no, Dave, we've all got one though. We've all got one in our family who's like the, the conspiracy one, like 9-11 was an inside job. It's like, it wasn't! It wasn't! Christ. The Illuminati is powerful enough to assassinate anybody who comes close to interrupting their very important work. If you look at this without using any intelligence at all, it sort of makes sense. <laughs> Dave throwing shade on his own brother there. I mean, an organization with that much global influence would certainly employ an elite hit squad, and it's not like governments don't occasionally have particularly troublesome citizens assassinated for the good of the leaders. Yeah, I mean, everyone. You get to a certain size in, like, business or fame or whatever and it's yeah of course you have a hit squad to take out your enemies like i'm not even that famous and i already have a hit squad for taking out all my enemies I'll kill him! I swear it! yes russia we're looking at you allegedly so how deep does this go how many people have been disappeared over the years purely because they displeased the illuminati well, let's find out. People on these Reddit forums are going to be like, Simon's pandering to the Illuminati. He doesn't want to take it out. He's saying, like, he's he's running... Uh, what's it called? Not running defense. He's running interference for the Illuminati. Because he doesn't want to get killed. Maybe he is Illuminati. Maybe I am. Don't agree with the enemy! The following presented in no particular order is a list of people who have been allegedly assassinated by the Illuminati. If John F. Kennedy's not on here, I'm going to be sad because it's like you've got to you've got to work JFK assassination into every conspiracy theory. Or also this first entry, Princess Diana. August the 31st, 1997 is one of those days that if you're old enough, you will remember with some degree of clarity. Being only nine years old at the time. How old was I? Seven? I don't know. I was ten years old at the time. Ah, Dave and I, almost the same age. I didn't, I, did, I didn't know that, but I feel like I did. I, I just, I kind of assume that everyone <laughs> I interact with is my age. 
<laughs> Liam's my community manager. And I was just like this whole, whole time, even though I know he's a student, I'm just like, yeah, Liam, he's in his 30s. And then he's like, no, he's like well over 10 years younger than me. And I'm like, oh yeah, other people exist who are younger. Cause you know, you just get in your own little world. <laughs> Being only nine years old at the time and having no idea who Princess Diana was, I nevertheless remember watching all the channel's news bulletin that announced her death and then sitting through an hour-long lecture from my dad about who she was and why it was sad. I can ne- my parents would never do this. My dad would just be like, yeah, she's like royal family or something. And I'd be like, okay, <laughs> that's it. I don't even really remember this. How dare you? While the official report claimed that she had been killed in a car crash while she attempted to escape from paparazzi and her son, Prince Harry, has used this as an excuse for some pretty despicable behavior over the years, many people believe that the whole thing was a cover-up. Wait, Harry's just being like, Harry dresses as an RC. My mum died in a car accident. It's like, all right, Harry, chill. Like, I don't know. I also lost a parent when I was really young and uh, I I don't dress up as a Nazi. Let's let's not, I I, I don't use that as as an excuse. For anything. Oh, I, have, oh. I don't want to tell this story because it's too cringe. <laughs> I'll tell it. Fuck it. Yeah! So I was at school and I must have been like 14 or whatever. Maybe I was like, maybe I was a bit younger. No, I was younger because we were in the Cornwallis building. Uh, so I must have been like 12. And oh, this story's so cringe. <laughs> ah, it's cringe on me. But I was 12. Fuck it. I'm cutting myself some slack. And I, I liked climbing things. And so we had these like lampposts and I climb up this lamppost and uh, I don't know, it's just something we did. And then you shake it back and forth and the lamppost moves. And uh, teacher comes by and he's like, Whistler, get down from there. And I'm like, oh, busted. And so I, I slide down this giant street lamp and the teacher says to me like, what would your mother say? <laughs> and I just replied, she wouldn't say anything because she's dead. And she was. God. And then the teacher was just like, you could see his face just shift. And as he, because I, I guess this was a known thing because it was quite recently before. And he saw his face shift. And I felt so bad. God, why am I telling this story? I was 12. I was 12. And I wasn't dressing up as a Nazi. What? What Princess Diana allegedly did to upset the founders of the New World Order remains unclear, but there are those out there who believe that they are responsible for her death. One article I found online suggests that she was assassinated due to her work with the AIDS Foundation. You see, according to the writer of that article, HIV and AIDS have been deliberately spread by the Illuminati in order to eradicate the gays. I feel like saying the gays is like somehow you've taken two words which are not offensive and you've made it super offensive. <laughs> If just by taking two really simple words and stringing them together. The gays. It also sounds like something like my grandparents would say, you know, along with something like vaguely racist. You know, it's good, like, that, that you know, they were dead now. <laughs> it's like society progresses by people dying. Oh, God. I'm not really one to give much creed. Why are we talking about death so much today? Jesus Christ. <laughs> it's like my family's deaths. Why? I'm not really one to give much credence to any online conspiracy theories, but if I had to pick one involving Diana, I find it much more likely that her death had something to do with the Queen and Prince Philip rather than the Illuminati. To be clear, I don't actually believe this. I just think that it's more likely in the same way that it's more likely you'll be hit by lightning three times, then crushed by a falling piano than you are to win the lottery. Is that true? Struck by lightning three times, then crushed by a falling piano? President Kennedy! Yes, is the second one. I knew it. 11, 22, 63. Great book. (laughs) Uh, is it 11, 20? I think, I think the book has two names and I discovered this. 11, 22, 63 is the name of the book in America and everywhere else is called Dallas 63, which is, uh, it's this Stephen King book about this guy who goes back in time to prevent the assassination of Kennedy. It's a f***ing banger of a book. One of my favorite books. 11, 22, 63 is not just an example of how Americans write the date incorrectly. It also happens to be the date on which President Kennedy was assassinated by Lee Harvey Oswald. According to the official reports, Oswald shot Kennedy from the third floor of the Texas Book Depository. As Simon will be aware, having covered this story extensively on many channels. Yeah. It, I mean, it does not tire me like Rome. Like, Jesus Christ, if I make a video, another video about Rome, it's like, I'll just take myself out back. Rome. Rome. I've even started. I've got up on my whiteboard of channel ideas. 
<laughs> it's such a good name for a channel. It's called Rome, the Eternal Empire. And it's just like, because I know it'd be popular. I know I can make it work. But it's been up there for like a year because I'm like, I can't do it. It's too boring. I can't do it. If I cover like Quintinius Maximus Severus or whatever the fuck, another time we're going to... It is certainly no less likely than some of the other ideas that have been pitched. Talking of less likely ideas, how do the Illuminati fit into all of this? Well, I'm glad you asked. It appears that there are people out there who genuinely believe Kennedy had discovered the secret. Ooh, what's the secret? Wait, is it just the secret of the Illuminati? He's the president, of course he knows of it. If the Illuminati's real, I feel like becoming president's gotta be pretty awesome, right? You gotta be elected and you're like, cool, 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 cool. So, uh... CIA, NSA, FBI. When do I get the briefing? And they'll be like, sorry, Mr. President. The briefing. You know, the one where you tell me about aliens. The one where you tell me about JFK. The one where you tell me about all the secrets and the Illuminati and the secret global world order. I mean, I'm president now. Tell it to me. Unleash it. And they'll be like, what the f are you talking about? Oh, I'm sorry, sir. None of that. It's, it's not real. There are no aliens. JFK was shot by Lee Harvey Oswald. There's no secrets. And you realize <laughs> that's the only reason I became president, you assholes. Nothing? Really, bitch? Thank you so much for wasting my mother. In time. Taking time away from his many acts of infidelity, the President of the United States had discovered that it was not he who was running the country and was about to blow the whistle. Obviously, he had to go. Now, although these people believe that Kennedy was definitely assassinated by the Illuminati, opinions vary as to exactly how this was achieved. Perhaps the least convoluted idea suggests that Lee Harvey Oswald was either a low-ranking member of the Illuminati or simply employed by them to carry out the hit. Exactly what the Illuminati would want with a communist sympathizing failed marine in the ranks is never really made clear. Presumably, to avoid thinking too hard, conspiracists seem to have simply latched on to every other pre-existing conspiracy theory regarding the Kennedy assassination. Alternative shooters, alien involvement, because fucking why not? <laughs> Soviet involvement, suggesting that Kennedy was never actually assassinated but merely kidnapped. Bro, there's literally video of his head exploding. Like, fuck. <laughs> And it was the 60s. It's not so there were loads of people watching. His brains were all over the car. This is brutal. And simply claimed that each unlikely scenario was organized by the Illuminati. From what I remember, Simon and I have the same opinion that there is probably information about the Kennedy assassination that we do not and will not know. Yeah, I completely agree. Kennedy assassination's fucking sketchy. There's definitely going on there that we don't know about. Do I think it was the Illuminati? <laughs> No. Aliens? No. Soviet involvement? Who the fuck knows? Maybe it was the 60s. However, if it ever actually transpires that he was killed by a top-secret group of world leaders, I'll print out a copy of the script, fly to Prague, go to Simon's office, and eat said script live on the channel. Wait, what was that? If it turns out it's a secret, top-secret group of world leaders? Yeah, I'm down. I'm, d I'm down. I'll give you a budget for that, Dave. Assuming, of course, that Simon is okay with this. I am okay with this. John Lennon. John Lennon's a prick, right? <laughs> Allegedly. Like, everything you read about John Lennon, it's like, everyone's like, oh, peace and love, bro, peace and love. Didn't he, like, hang on, let me get, uh, let me get ChatGPT to make sure that we're not going to get sued here. One second. A few moments later. I've really got a way to uh, figure out a way to loop this in so I can just talk to it and not have to hold the speaker up to the microphone. Here we go. And make it very impossible to touch the button. I'm touching the button! Thank you for watching. Why would you write that? Why would you say that? That's nothing. What 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 are you doing? Yo, Chat GPT, did John Lennon like beat his wife and John Lennon, the famous member of the Beatles, did have a complex and sometimes troubled personal life. In his own words, he mentioned in interviews that he wasn't always kind or gentle in his relationships especially in his younger years. He talked about being aggressive in his first marriage and, and regretted his behavior. It's important to understand people and their actions in the full context of their lives and times. Lennon later became an advocate for peace and love, which showed a change in his views. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Like he changed his views and stuff because people were like, it's not okay to do that. But just answer my question. Did he hit his wife? Yes, John Lennon admitted in interviews that he was 
physically violent in his relationships during his early life. Thank you, yes. So I think we can all agree that John Lennon's a bit of a douchebag. Let's ask ChatGPT. Yeah, like bearing all of that in mind, would you agree with me that John Lennon is a bit of a douchebag? It's understandable why someone might view John Lennon's early actions negatively. People often have complex... He's too polite, but he thinks so. Yes, he does. Fascinating tangent, Simon. Let's carry on. Whether you love them or hate them, everybody watching this video will have heard of the Beatles. For the record, I will tolerate the Beatles in small doses and somewhat grudgingly admit that they changed the course of music for the better. However, I believe that there were many other artists at the time who could have done the same thing probably better and it was the Beatles who just got a lucky break. Although this point of view is somewhat divisive, one thing that most people seem to agree on is that John Lennon was a total bellend. Yes, you, me, and ChatGPT. If you don't believe me, ask his son. Oh yeah, yeah, no, I remember making a video about that. His son is, like, not a fan. <laughs> However, just because somebody is a bell end, it doesn't actually mean that they deserve to be murdered in cold blood, which is what happened to John Lennon on the 8th of December 1980. His murderer, Mark David Chapman, claimed that he had been a longtime fan of the group before being... Before, before becoming incensed with John Lennon's hedonistic lifestyle and claims that the Beatles were more famous than Jesus. I mean, Jesus is, like, mega famous. You're not... They're not more famous than Jesus. I don't have a problem with them saying that, though. <laughs> I hope to one day be more famous than Jesus. An interesting fact, although Chapman received a 20 years to life sentence and became eligible parole in the year 2000, he's been denied that parole 12 times. So, is he still alive? Whoa! So how are the Illuminati allegedly involved? Well, John Lennon didn't just piss off the majority of people he met, allegedly his outspokenness against big industry and those in power made him a person of distaste to many of the higher-ups. It's been claimed that his outspokenness upset the Illuminati. Not wanting this famous musician to do anything that might disrupt the path to a new world order, they kidnapped Chapman, used advanced mind control techniques on him and set him on the path of assassination. Although it is true that the INS Immigration and Naturalization Service tried to deport him, and the FBI had him under surveillance. No evidence has yet emerged that his assassination was anything more than the misguided actions of a disgruntled fan. One more interesting fact before we move on. According to one of the police officers that helped rush him to the hospital, his last word was yes. I'm genuinely surprised it wasn't me. <laughs> David I same page, John Lennon. What a douche. Abraham Lincoln. It seems that should you be unlucky enough to become president of the United States, you fall into one of two categories. You are either accused of being a member of the Illuminati or placed on their hit list. Unfortunately for President Lincoln, he was another example of the latter. On April the 15th, 1865, President Lincoln was assassinated by John Wilkes Booth. The official reason for his doing this is as follows. Soon after the end of the Civil War, Lincoln gave a speech in which he argued that black men should be given the right to vote. <laughs> Outrageous. I'll him! I swear it! Booth was in the audience during the speech, and being a massive racist and general asshole, he vowed that Lincoln would never make another speech. Asshole, he may have been, but he still managed to do something that few politicians ever manage. He made good on his promise. Just three days later, Lincoln was dead. So, just exactly how did the actions of one crazy racist become understood by some to be an Illuminati hit job? To answer that question, we must take a look at another one of his speeches, more specifically the one in which he says, The money powers prey upon the nation in times of peace and conspire against it in times of adversity. The banking powers are more despotic than a monarchy, more insolent than autocracy, more selfish than bureaucracy. They denounce as public enemies all who question their methods or throw light upon their crimes. So he's just saying some, like, politician bullshit. Like, oh, it's the people in power. Is it, no one's killing him for this. <laughs> he's not being like, I'm gonna, like... What, who was it? Was it, um... Was it Daddy Roosevelt? Like, the big one? Uh, he got shot in the chest? Uh, Theodore Roosevelt? Teddy Roosevelt? Isn't he the one who busted up all those trusts? If the Illuminati are gonna kill anyone, it's gonna be him. Lincoln was just like, I don't like big banks. Teddy Roosevelt was like, you're f***ing done. <laughs> Seeing as how the Illuminati is allegedly the most powerful organization in the world and they hold on to that power by controlling all of the world's banks, big businesses, etc., it appears that Lincoln would have to go for similar reasons as Kennedy. Okay, I couldn't find any information that claims Lincoln actually knew about the Illuminati, so he was several steps behind Kennedy, but to be fair to him, Kennedy had far more resources at his disposal. Even without direct knowledge, if I were in charge of a world-dominating organization and the President of the United States started publicly speaking against, against the very 
military institutions that allowed my organization to hold on to power, then getting rid of him would be the only sensible option. Wait, are you just making, are you making an argument? But like, Dave's like, yeah, no, he was. <laughs> he was. And I would. X, X, X. Tenation. Ten, tentation. Tentation? Ten, <laughs> I don't know, what the is this? XXX tentation. How nobody has been tenation? I feel like I've definitely heard of this. The dude's a rapper or something, right? Tentacion? How do you say that? How nobody has been sued over this next one truly baffles me. And as I have no wish to be sued, I offer the following introduction. The information contained within this section was taken from the writings of crazy people on the internet who may not be credible sources. Crazy people on the internet are never a credible source, Dave. Neither Simon, myself, or any member of the Blaine Brain Blaze team are responsible for the creation of this information. I hope. <laughs> With that out of the way, let me explain. One of the many strange stories about the Illuminati is that in order to join, you must prove your loyalty by killing somebody. Because, you know, as well as being in pursuit of a new world order, they're also just a common f***ing street gang. One of the people who is claimed to have fallen victim to this ritual was XXX Tentation. As many of you will know, I know almost nothing about the stars who are associated with speaking quickly over music. <laughs> That's it. Look, I don't know who XXX Tentation is, but some rap music's pretty good. So I've borrowed this brief informa informative summer summary from Vulture.com. The late rapper XXX Tentation, real name Jarser Onfroy, experienced a tumultuous but relatively rapid rise to success punctuated by serious legal issues and disturbing acts of violence. He signed a record deal rumored to be worth a whopping $6 million despite a video that surfaced showing XXX hitting a fan in the head with a microphone at the Rolling Loud Festival in Mountain View, California. I mean, how annoying was the fan? <laughs> You'd be like, bop! <laughs> at the time of his murder in June 2018, he was also awaiting trial for a 2016 domestic abuse case in which he was charged with aggravated battery of a pregnant woman, domestic battery by strangulation, false imprisonment, and witness tampering. Uh, sounds like old XXX tentation. Bit of a bell end, in my opinion. Oh, wait. He's dead. You don't have to say, in my opinion, right? Because you can't defame dead people. What a bell end! Allegedly. <laughs> Just in case. While the blame for his murder or credit for doing the world a favor, depending on how you look at it, was laid squarely at the feet of Michael Boatwright, Derek, De Dedrick Williams, and Travon Newsom, some who who killed the rapper outside a motorcycle shop while relieving him of fifty thousand dollars, bruh. Fifty thousand dollars, even in hundreds. That's a fat stack. What are you doing with? I guess it's just like rapping, the rapid lifestyle. You just got to carry loads of cash. Seems like a terrible idea. There is one theory that claims he was, in fact, a sacrifice made to the Illuminati by a new member who wished to ascend. So, who is it that this alleged new member might be? Well, that's none other than Billie Eilish! <laughs> Again, I've never listened to Billie Eilish's music, but I know what Billie Eilish looks like because, for some reason, YouTube, for years, insisted that I watch, like, these interviews with Billie Eilish. It's like Billie Eilish 2019, Billie Eilish 2020. I never clicked on them. They're by like GQ or something. An interview with Billie Eilish like two years apart, three years apart or something like that. And I'm just like, I just don't care. I don't know who Billie Eilish is. I don't know what her music sounds like. I don't care. The idea that Eilish is an Illuminatus has been around online for some time now. Even I, someone who deliberately avoids that sort of thing, was aware of it. <laughs> <laughs> Apparently, I've been avoiding it better than you, Dave. As a quick aside, before I started working for Simon, I had a fairly normal and useful relationship with the recommendations of the YouTube algorithm. Now, after writing many videos for Into the Shadows, several casual criminalists, and a couple of Decoding the Unknowns, a published screenshot of my recommended YouTube videos would probably result in a visit from the ladies and gentlemen of the law. Yeah, those channels go pretty dark. Anyway, getting back to Billie Eilish. By most accounts, she and the late Mr. Onfroy were quite good friends. Personally, I find the idea that he had any friends at all to be perhaps the most unbelievable thing about this particular conspiracy theory, but there you go. Yeah, he does sound like an absolute douche. Not only has it been claimed that Eilish chose to murder her friend to prove her dedication to the Illuminati, she also did exactly what every sane individual would do and wrote a song about it. Of course she did. Mainly to prove my own dedication to Brainblaze, I listened to this song, which incidentally is called Bury a Friend. And I've got to say, I don't see the link. When asked about what the song was about, Eilish said, Bury a Friend is literally from the perspective of the monster under my bed. If you put yourself in that mindset, what is this creature doing or feeling? What are you talking about, Billy? 
<laughs> I don't know what that means. I also confess that I'm this monster because I'm my worst, my own worst enemy. I might be the monster under your bed. Yeah, you're not though, Billy. You're not. <laughs> Billy, if you're the monster under people's beds, stop that. It's weird. You're going to get loads of restraining orders against you. Can you imagine this like, Dad, I'm scared. Dad, there's a monster under my bed. I'd be like, don't worry, Remus. Everything's fine. And I go into Remus's bedroom. <laughs> He's like, Dad, there's a monster under there. And I'm like, okay, let, let's have a look together. I'm sure there's no one. What the? Billy Eilish. <laughs> If for some reason you feel inclined to torture yourself in the same way that I did by listening to the song, you will see that this actually makes a certain kind of sense. Much more sense than the alternative anyway. The only other piece of evidence that people claim to have that suggests Billie Eilish might be an Illuminatus is that when asked, she denied it. I mean, isn't that exactly what an Illuminatus would do? Is Illuminatus really how you say a member of the Illuminati? I feel like I want to just put Illuminatus on my business card. Just be like, it doesn't say YouTuber, it just says Illuminatus. Yeah, I'll take that. I'd love to be in the Illuminati. It sounds awesome. Having said that, there is somebody not too far away, somebody that we all know who could very well be a member of this organization. A quick search through a certain prolific YouTuber's Twitter feed reveals the following messages. Finally, my invitation to join the Illuminati showed up. Weird that it got spam filtered. <laughs> Wait, did I write that? He's re is he referring to me? I don't even remember writing that. And even more damning that we're actually all part of a secret Illuminati-style club. It's pretty great. Oh, I do remember writing that. I think I did write that in response to someone like being like, Oh, Simon, you just covered up this Illuminati. And I was like, yeah, it's f***ing awesome. <laughs> Illuminati! I'm definitely not insinuating this that this is an admission of membership, but it gives you pause for thought, especially if you consider that Danny never actually returns from his last escape attempt. Could he have been Simon's regrettable blood sacrifice? It was necessary. It was necessary. Thanks for watching. Rome! Anywhere I Rome! <laughs>